Here are 30 most commonly asked SAP BASIS troubleshooting interview questions, along with detailed and most informative answers. 1. How do you troubleshoot performance issues in SAP systems? Answer. Performance sizes in SAP systems can be caused by various factors. Here's a structured approach to troubleshooting. A. Check system sources, monitor PU, memory, disk I.O., and network utilization on the application servers and database servers. B. Analyze workload, identify a source intensive transactions or jobs using tools like SAP Transactions and O3N workload. Analysis. C. Database performance. Analyze a database performance using tools like SAP Transaction, SD04 database performance or database specific monitoring tools. D. SAP buffer tuning. Review SAP buffer configurations, e.g., shared buffers, data buffers using Transaction ST02 SAP memory management. E. A BAP code of view. Analyze a custom BAP code for performance issues using Transaction SE30 ABAP Runtime Analysis or SD05 SQL Trace. F. Index Optimization. Optimize database indexes for frequently accessed tables to improve query performance. G. SAP Notes and OS Massages. Search for relevant SAP notes or raise OSS messages for SAP support assistance if needed. 2. What steps would you take to troubleshoot a system dump about runtime error in SAP? Answer: System dumps in SAP, also known as ABAP runtime errors, require thorough analysis. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Analyze a dump. Use a transaction street 22 about dump analysis to analyze the dump details, including error messages and affected programs. B. Check system logs. Review system logs DG, developer traces, system logs for additional information leaking up to the dump. C.debugging colon if necessary. Use transaction ST22 to activate debugging to analyze the dump in real time. D. SAP note search. Search for relevant SAP notes related to the specific dump error code or message. E. Code of view. Analyze if affected ABAP code and make necessary corrections to fix the root cause of the dump. F.testing colon perform thorough testing for implementing corrections to ensure the issue is resolved. 3. How would you troubleshoot a failed SAP system startup? Answer. A failed SAP system startup can be due to various reasons. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Check system logs. Review system logs DG. Work processes logs. Startup logs for any error messages or warnings. B. Database connectivity. Ensure proper connectivity between the application server and database server. C. File system checks. Verify file system integrity and check for any disk space issues. D. SAP startup parameters. Check SAP startup parameters, e.g., profile parameters for correctness and consistency. E. Databasa Startup. Verify that the database instance is up and running. F. SAP Starter Stop Scripts. Check SAP Starter Stop Scripts for errors and correct any inconsistencies. G. SAP Note Search. Search for relevant SAP notes related to startup failures for troubleshooting guidance. 4. How would you troubleshoot a lock table overflow issue in SAP? Answer. Lockable overflow issues in SAP can cause performance degradation and transaction failures. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Monitor lock entries. Use your transaction SM12 lock entries to monitor lock entries and identify any overflow situations. B. Lock table size. Check the current size of the lock table. Using transactions 11 maintain profile parameters for the parameter ENC table underscore size c adjust lock table size if lock table size is insufficient adjust it using transactions 10 edit profile by increasing the value of enc table underscore size d analyze lock conflicts analyze the lock conflicts 
and long duration locks to identify potential performance bottlenecks. E. Database lock mechanism. Consult with the database administrator to ensure that the database lock mechanism is properly configured and optimized. F. Performance monitoring. Monitor system performance metrics to detect any recurring lock table overflow issues. 5. What steps would you take to troubleshoot a failed SAP GUI connection? Answer. Failed SAP GUI connections can be due to various reasons. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Check SAP GUI version. Ensure that the SAP GUI client version is compatible with the SAP system version. B. Network connectivity. Verify work connectivity between the client machine and the SAP application server. C. Firewall settings. Check firewall settings to ensure that necessary ports e.g. 32xx series are open for SAP GUI communication. D. Suprouter. Verify Suprouter configuration if applicable, ensuring correct routing between SAP GUI and the SAP system. E. SAP Log on route. Check SAP Log and group configuration to ensure that the application server is reachable and load balance properly. F. Client certificate. Verify if client certificates are required for authentication and ensure they are correctly configured. G. SAP GUI trace. Enable a SAP GUI trace on the client side if needed to capture detailed communication logs for analysis. 6. How would you troubleshoot a background job that is stuck or not running as expected? Answer. Stuck or failed background jobs in SAP can impact system performance and data processing. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Checksum 37. Use a transaction SM37 job overview to check the status of the background job and identify any errors. B. Job log. Review the job log to identify any error messages or warnings that may indicate the cause of the issue. C. Job selection. Ensure that the job selection criteria, e.g., variant parameters, are correctly set and match the intended scope. D. Job scheduling. Check job scheduling configuration, e.g., job class. Start condition to ensure proper execution timing and dependencies. E. Resource availability. Verify that there are enough resources available. E.g. Work processes. Background servers for job execution. F. Deadlocks. Analyze for potential deadlocks or lock contention issues that may be causing the job to ha. Eng. G. Restart or cancel. Depending on the situation, consider restarting the job or cancelling it if necessary. 7. What steps would you take to troubleshoot a transport request import failure? Answer. Transport request import failures can occur due to various reasons. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Check import logs. Review import logs e.g. Transaction SDMS underscore import to identify specific errors or warnings during the import process. B. Transport directory. Verify the availability and consistency of the transport directory e.g. File permissions, directory structure. C. Transport queue. Check status of the transport queue in transaction SE03 to ensure that the request is released and properly imported. D. Transport dependencies. Ensure that all dependent objects are included in the transport request and are available in the target system. E. TP and a three translocks. Analyze it and a three translocks for low level transport related errors or issues. F. Database connectivity. Verify database connectivity and ensure that the target system is accessible during the import process. G. Rollback options. Consider rollback options, if available, in case of critical errors during the import process. 8. How would you troubleshoot a system performance degradation after a recent SAP system upgrade? Answer. Performance degrant after a system upgrade can occur due to various factors. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Performance Baseline. Compare system performance metrics before and after the upgrade to identify any significant changes. B. 
Review upgrader logs. Analyze upgrade logs to identify any errors or warnings that may indicate issues during the upgrade. Process. C. Databaser statistics. Collect and analyze database statistics to identify any changes in database performance post-upgrade. D. SAP kernel. Verify that the SAP kernel version is compatible with the upgraded SAP system and address any kernel-related issues. E. Parameter tuning. Review and adjust SAP profile parameters, e.g. Memory parameters, work process settings based on post-upgrade performance analysis. F. ABAPCODE analysis. Analyze ECOSTAM ABAP code for potential compatibility issues or performance bottlenecks introduced by the upgrade. G. Index and tabular maintenance. Perform index and table maintenance activities to optimize database performance post upgrade. 9. How would you troubleshoot an RFC connection failure between SAP systems? Answer. RFC remote function call connection failures between SAP systems can disrupt communication and data exchange. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Check some 59. User transaction SM59 RFC destinations to check the configuration and status of the RFC connection. B. Connection test. Perform an RFC connection test within SM59 to diagnose connectivity issues and verify authentication credentials. C. Firewall settings. Verify firewall settings to ensure that necessary ports e.g. 33xx series are open for RFC communication. D. Gateway configuration. Check the gateway configuration e.g. services file. Gateway parameters to ensure proper routing of RFC traffic. E. Network trace. Using work tracing tools e.g. Wireshark to capture and analyze network traffic between the source and target systems. F. Suprouter. Verify Suprouter configuration if RFC communication is routed through a Suprouter. G. SAP Note Search. Search for relevant SAP notes related to RFC connection issues for troubleshooting guidance. 10. How would you troubleshoot an SAP system freeze or unresponsive behavior? Answer. ANSAP system freeze or unresponsive behavior can be critical and require immediate attention. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. System monitoring. Monitor system health indicators e.g. CPU, memory, disk utilization. Using SAP transactions like SD06 operating system monitor and Sunto to SAP memory management. B. Check work process. Check status of work processes using Transaction SM50 work process overview to identify any hanging or blocked processes. C. Database connectivity. Verify database connectivity and responsiveness. Using transaction debug pit or database specific monitoring tools. D. Check system logs. Review system logs, e.g. Developer traces, system logs. For any error messages or warnings indicating the cause of the system freeze. E. Restart services. If safe to do so, consider restarting. SAP services or specific components, e.g. Application servers, database instances to restore system functionality. F. Perform and set tuning. Analyze their performance metrics and apply. Tuning adjustments to optimize system resource utilization and prevent future freezes. 11. How would you troubleshoot a database connection failure between SAP application servers and the database server? Answer. Database connection failures between SAP application servers and the database server can disrupt system operations. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Check .obsess.os. Verify its status of the database instance to ensure it is up and running. B. Database Celestena. Check status of the database listener to ensure it is active and accepting connections. C. TNS configuration. Verify the correctness of the TNS transparent network substrate. Configuration on the application server for connecting to the database. D. Network connectivity. 
View stalls like ping and tnsping to verify network connectivity between the application server and the database server. E. Firewall settings. Ensure that firewall settings allow communication between the application server and the database server on the required ports. F. Database client installation. Check database client installation on the application server for correctness and completeness. G. Database selects. Review database logs for any error messages or warnings related to connection, failures. H. SAP data bar separate file. Verify the correctness of the SAP database profile parameters e.g. dboast, dbsid, dbpot for connecting to the database. 12. How would you troubleshoot a spool overflow issue in SAP? Answer. Spool overflow issues in SAP can lead to delays in printing and affect system performance. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Checks BO1. Use a transaction SPO1 output controller to check the status of spool requests and identify any overflow situations. B. Spool parameters. Review and adjust spool parameters, e.g. RESPO, max underscore spool underscore requests. Using transaction as 11 to increase spool capacity if needed. C. Spool cleanup. Scheduler regular spool cleanup jobs. Using transaction SP12 spool administration to remove old or obsolete spool requests. D. Spool locks. Check for any locks on spool requests using transaction SP01 and release them if necessary. E. Printer configuration. Ensure of that printer configurations e.g. printer definitions, device types, are correctly set up and match the actual printer settings. F. Spool process monitoring. Monitor spool process performance. Using transaction SPAD spool administration and adjust parameters as needed to optimize performance. G. Printer spool restart. If the issue persists, consider restarting the printer spooler service on the SAP application server. 13. How would you troubleshoot a failed SAP system client copy? Answer. Failed SAP system client copies can occur due to various reasons. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Check SCC3 logs colon review transactions 3 client copy logs to identify any errors or warnings during the client copy process. B. Source a client. Verify the source client's availability and consistency to ensure that data can be copied successfully. C. Target client. Check the target client's readiness and available space to accommodate the copied data. D. Dotabars space. Ensure that there is sufficient space in the database table spaces for the target client data. E. Client copy profile. Review and adjust client copy profile. Parameters e.g. Buffer size, parallel processes to optimize performance and avoid failures. F. Authorization issues. Checks are authorizations for the client copy process to ensure that necessary privileges are granted. G. Restart or resume. Depending on the error encountered, consider restarting or resuming the client copy process from the last successful step. 14. How would you troubleshoot a failed SAP system update? Upgrade using Software Update Manager Sum. Answer. A failed SAP system update or upgrade using Software Update Manager Sum can pose challenges. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Check some logs. Review some logs and log files generated during the update and upgrade process to identify specific errors or warnings. B. Software dependencies. Ensure that all prerequisite software components and patches are installed and configured correctly before starting the update or upgrade. C. SAP Note search. Search for relevant SAP notes related to known issues or, or troubleshooting guidance for the specific SUM version and SAP system components. D. Database backup. Verify that a recent database backup is available to restore the system in case of critical failures during the update or upgrade. E. Rollback plan. Preparia. Rollback plan in advance, including 
Steps to revert to the previous system states if the update upgrade cannot be completed successfully. F. Error analysis. Analyze the specif error messages encountered during the update or upgrade process and follow recommended troubleshooting steps provided by SAP or other SUM tool. 15. How would you troubleshoot an SAP system lockout issue due to incorrect user password attempts? Answer. SAP system lockout issues can occur when users exceed the maximum number of allowed incorrect password root attempts. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. User lock status. Check the lock status of the affected user accounts using transaction issue 01 user maintenance. B. Unlock users. If necessary, unlock locked user accounts using transaction SU01 or SU10 mass user maintenance. C. Password policies. Review password policies configured in SAP e.g. password length, expiration period, to ensure they align with security requirements. D. User authentication. Verify that users are entering correct passwords and not experiencing authentication issues. E. Password reset. Offer assistance to users who need to reset their passwords following lockout situations. F. A security audit. Perform a security audit to identify any patterns of incorrect password attempts or potential security breaches. 16. How would you troubleshoot a failed SAP system login issue for specific user accounts? Answer. Failed SAP system login issues for specific user accounts can be caused by various factors. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. User account status. Check status of the affected user accounts. Using transactions SU01 user maintenance to ensure they are not locked or disabled. B. Password expiry. Verify if the user's password has expired and prompt them to reset their password if necessary. C. User authorization. Review user authorizations and roles assigned to the affected user accounts to ensure they have appropriate access permissions. D. Password policy compliance. Ensure if that users are adhering to password policies e.g. password complexity, expiration when setting their passwords. E. Log and data changes. Check for recent changes to log and data, e.g. log and group, client that may affect user access. F a single sign on SSO. If so, is enabled. Verify SSO configurations and check for any issues with the SSO infrastructure. G. Network connectivity. Ensure that there are no network connectivity issues preventing users from accessing the SAP system. 17. How would you troubleshoot an issue with SAP system background job scheduling not working as expect? Ed. Answer. Background job scheduling issues in SAP can disrupt automated processes and affect system operations. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Check some 37. Use a transaction SM37 job overview to review the status of background jobs and identify any failed or stuck jobs. B. Job scheduling configuration. Verify the job scheduling configuration, e.g. job classes. Start conditions using transaction SM36 defined background job. C. Job log analysis. Review job logs to identify any error messages or warnings indicating issues with job execution. D. Job server availability. Ensure that there are enough background work processes available on the application server for job execution. E. Job variant parameters. Check the variant parameters of scheduled jobs to ensure they are set correctly and match the intended job scope. F. Resource availability. Monitor system resources, e.g. CPU, memory to ensure there are no resource shortages affecting background job execution. G. Job scheduling locks. Check for any locks on job scheduling tables using transaction SM12. Lock entries and release them if necessary. 18. How would you troubleshoot a database performance degradation issue in an SAP system? Answer. Database performance degradation in an SAP system can impact overall system responsiveness and user experience. Here's how to troubleshoot. 
A. DTABIS Monitoring Monitor database performance metrics, e.g. CPU usage, disk I.O. Memory utilization Using database-specific tools or SAP transactions like SD04 database performance B. Database indexes Analyze a database indexes and perform index optimization to improve query performance C. SQL Statement Analysis Use a transaction street 05 SQL trace or database-specific tracing tools to analyze SQL statements for inefficiencies or bottlenecks. D. Databasa statistics. Review database statistics and update optimizer statistics to ensure accurate query execution plans. E. Buffer cache tuning. Adjust database buffer cache parameters to optimize memory usage and reduce disk I.O. F. Table partitioning. Implementable partitioning strategies to distribute data evenly and improve database performance. G. Database parameter tuning. Review and adjust database parameters, e.g. buffer sizes, parallel processing settings, based on performance analysis and workload characteristics. 19. How would you troubleshoot an issue with SAP system log and performance being slow? Answer. Slow log and performance in an SAP system can be frustrating for users and impact productivity. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. System monitoring. Monitor system resources e.g. CPU, memory, disk I.O. Using transaction ST06 operating system monitor to identify any resource constraints. B. Network latency. Check network latency between client machines and the SAP application server using network. Diagnostic tools. C. Profile parameters. Review and adjust. SAP profile parameters, e.g. Login disable underscore multi underscore GUI underscore login to optimize login performance. D. Dispatcher config -inton. Ensure auth that SAP dispatcher configurations, e.g. Worker threads, max underscore Q underscore size are optimized for a handling login requests efficiently. E. Load balancing. Verify load balancing configurations, e.g. SAP Logan Group to distribute Logan requests evenly across application servers. F. Client City Analysis 20. How would you troubleshoot an issue with RFC destinations not working as expected in an SAP system? Landscape Answer. RF destination issues can disrupt communication between SAP systems or external systems. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. SM59 Configuration colon Review Bring in FC destination configurations in transaction SM59 to ensure Correctness e.g. Connection type Target system details B. Connection test Perform an RFC connection test within SM59 to check connectivity and authentication with the target system C. Gateway configuration Verify gateway configurations, e.g. Services file. Gateway parameters to ensure proper routing of RFC traffic. D. Firewall settings. Check firewall settings to ensure that necessary ports, e.g. 33XX series, are open for RFC communication. E. Suprouter. Verify suprouter configuration if RFC communication is routed through a suprouter. F. Destination Logan data. Verify the correctness of Logan data, e.g. User credentials. Language settings configured for RFC destinations. G. RFC destination grouping. Check of destination groupings, e.g. Load balancing groups to ensure proper distribution of RFC calls. H. Network tracing. Use work tracing tools, e.g. Wireshark to capture and analyze RFC communication packets for any anomalies. 21. How would you troubleshoot an issue with SAP system background job scheduling not working as expect? Ed. Answer. Background job scheduling issues in SAP can disrupt automated processes and affect system operations. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Check SM37. User transaction SM37 job overview. 
to review the status of background jobs and identify any failed or stuck jobs. B. Job scheduling configuration. Verified job scheduling configuration, e.g. job classes. Start conditions using transaction SM36 define background job. C. Job log analysis. Review job logs to identify any error messages or warnings indicating issues with job execution. D. Job server availability. Ensure that there are enough background work processes available on the application server for job execution. E. Job variant parameters. Check the variant parameters of scheduled jobs to ensure they are set correctly and match the intended job scope. F. Resource availability. Monitor system resources, e.g., CPU, memory, to ensure there are no resource shortages affecting background job execution. G. Job scheduling locks. Check for any locks on job scheduling tables using transaction SM12. Lock entries and release them if necessary. 22. How would you troubleshoot a failed SAP system client copy? Answer. Failed SAP system client copies can occur due to various reasons. Here's a troubleshooting approach. A. Check SCC3 logs colon review transactions 3 client copy logs to identify any errors or warnings during the client copy process. B. Source a client. Verify the source client's availability and consistency to ensure that data can be copied successfully. C. Target client. Check the target client's readiness and available space to accommodate the copied data. D. .rbars space. Ensure if that there is sufficient space in the database table spaces for the target client data. E. Client copy profile. Review and adjust client copy profile. Parameters e.g. buffer size, parallel processes to optimize performance and avoid failures. F. Authorization issues. Check the authorizations for the client copy process to ensure that necessary privileges are granted. G. Restart or resume. Depending on the error encountered, consider restarting or resuming the client copy process from the last successful step. 23. How would you troubleshoot an issue with spool requests not being printed in SAP? Answer. Spool request printing issues in SAP can occur due to various reasons. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Check SP01 colon use transaction SP01 output controller to review the status of spool requests and identify any failed or stuck requests. B. Printer configuration. Verify the printer configuration in SAP. Using transaction SPAD spool administration to ensure correct printer definitions and device types. C. Output device status. Check status of the output device associated with the spool requests to ensure it is active and available. D. Spool spooler configuration. Review spool spooler settings, e.g. Spool server, spool work process. Using transaction SPAD to ensure proper configuration. E. Print queues. Check the print queues on the operating system level to ensure there are no issues preventing spool requests from being processed. F. Printer connectivity. Verify connectivity between the SAP application server and the physical printer to ensure data transmission is successful. G. Printer driver. Ensure that the correct printer driver is installed and configured on the SAP application server for the target printer. H. Spool work process. Monitor spool work processes using transaction SM50 work process overview to ensure they are running and processing spool requests. 24. How would you troubleshoot an issue with missing data in SAP reports? Answer. Missing data in SAP reports can be frustrating for users and may indicate underlying issues. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Report selection criteria. Review selection criteria used for generating the report to ensure it includes the necessary data. B. Data source. Verify the data source e.g. Database table. View. Info provider used by the report to ensure data availability. 
C. Date extraction. Check data extraction process, e.g. data loads, data transfers, to ensure data is successfully extracted from the source system. D. Data consistency. Verify data consistency across relevant systems and modules to ensure that data is not missing due to synchronization issues. E. Authorization issues. Checks are authorizations to ensure that users have the necessary access permissions to view the data in the report. F. Report execution parameters. Review port execution parameters, e.g. time frame, filters, to ensure they are set correctly and do not exclude relevant data. G. Data validation. Perform data validation checks against the source system to verify data completeness and accuracy. H. Consult functional teams. Consult with functional teams and end users to understand their requirements and verify if the missing data is expected or abnormal. 25. How would you troubleshoot an issue with slow system response times in an SAP system? Answer. Slow system response times in an SAP system can impact user productivity and system performance. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Perform answer monitory. Monitor system performance metrics, e.g. CPU usage, memory utilization, disk I.O. Using SAP transactions, like SD-06 operating system monitor and SD-03 workload analysis. B. Workload analysis. Analyze workload distribution across application servers and instances using transaction ST03 to identify any imbalance or bottlenecks. C. Transaction analysis. Use of transaction stat statistics for workload analysis to analyze transaction response times and identify slow performing transactions. D. Database performance. Investigate a table's performance using database-specific monitoring tools or transactions, like SD-04 database performance, to identify SQL queries or table locks causing delays. E. Network latency. Check network latency between client machines and the SAP application server, using network diagnostic tools to ensure smooth communication. F. SAP kernel and patch level. Verify this AP kernel version and patch level to ensure compatibility and consider updating to the latest patch level if necessary. 26. How would you troubleshoot an issue with missing authorizations for users in an SAP system? Answer. Missing authorizations for users in an SAP system can lead to access issues and hinder user productivity. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. User Profiler View. Reviews a profiles using transaction SU01 user maintenance to ensure that users have the necessary roles and authorizations assigned. B. Authorization Trace. Use of Transaction Street 01 Authorization Trace to trace authorization checks performed during user activities and identify missing authorizations. C. Role Assignment. Verify role assignments for users using transaction PFCG role maintenance and ensure that roles are correctly assigned based on user responsibilities. D. Authorization object analysis. Analyze authorization objects and fields required for specific transactions or data access to identify missing authorizations. E. Profile generator SU24. User transaction SU24 maintain check indicators to maintain authorization check indicators and ensure that required authorizations are included. F. User training and communication. Provide training and guidance to users on authorization concepts and inform them about any changes in their authorization profiles. 27. How would you troubleshoot an issue with SAPGUI front-end installation failures? Answer. SAPGUI front-end installation failures can occur due to various reasons. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Error analysis. Review where a message is displayed during the installation process to identify the cause of the failure. B. Installation logs. Check installation logs generated during the installation process. 
For detailed information on installation steps and any encountered errors, see Prerequisite Check. Ensure that all prerequisites e.g. Operating system compatibility, system requirements are met before initiating the installation. D. Antivirus and firewall settings. Verify that antivirus software or firewall settings are not blocking the installation process and temporarily disable them if necessary. E. Installation saw. Ensure if that the installation saw CG, installation media, network share is accessible and not corrupted. F. User permissions. Verify that the user performing the installation has sufficient permissions to install software on the target system. G. Installation wrapper. Attempt to repair the installation using the provided repair options or reinstall the SAPGUI frontend if the issue persists. 28. How would you troubleshoot an issue with Saprouta connectivity between SAP systems? Answer. Saprouta connectivity issues can disrupt communication between SAP systems or external networks. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Saprouta Statushik. Verify the status of the Saprouta service to ensure it is running and active. B. Saprouta configuration file. Check Saprouta configuration file Saprouta to ensure that routes are configured correctly for target systems and networks. C. Network connectivity. Use tools like Ping and Telnet to verify network connectivity between Saprouta and target systems on the required ports. D. Firewall settings. Check firewall settings to ensure that necessary ports, e.g. 3299, are open for Saprouta communication and not blocked. E. Saprouta log analysis. Review Saprouta logs for any error messages or warnings indicating issues with communication or routing. F. SAP note search. Search for relevant SAP notes related to Saprouta connectivity issues for troubleshooting guidance and potential fixes. These questions provide further insights into SAP BASIS troubleshooting scenarios that are commonly discussed in interviews. Let me know if you need more questions or additional clarification on any topic. 29. How would you troubleshoot an issue with SAP system dumps, short dumps, or ABAP dumps occurring for Quently? Answer. Frequent occurrence of SAP system dumps can indicate underlying issues that need to be addressed. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Dump analysis. Analyzeth dump logs, e.g. Street 20 to transaction. To understand the nature and frequency of the dumps, along with the affected components. B. Error pattern identification. Look for patterns in dump occurrences, such as specific transactions, programs, or user activities triggering the dumps. C. ABAP code review. Review the AP code of affected programs for potential bugs, logical errors, or performance issues that could lead to dumps. D. Memory management. Monitor memory utilization using transaction street O to global memory and adjust memory parameters e.g. ABAP, heap underscore area underscore dear if memory related dumps are frequent. E. Database analysis. Check database performance and integrity. Using transaction debug pit or database specific tools to identify any issues leading to dumps. F. Patch levels and updates. Ensure that SAP kernel support packages and relevant patches are up to date to address known issues and vulnerabilities that may cause dumps. G. SAP note search. Search for relevant SAP notes related to the dump error messages or dump occurrences for troubleshooting guidance and potential solutions. 30. How would you troubleshoot an issue with inconsistent data replication between SAP systems in a LAN? Dscape EG. ECC to BW. Answer. Inconsistent data replication between SAP systems can lead to discrepancies in reporting and analysis. S. Here's how to troubleshoot. A. Data replication monitoring. Monitor data replication processes. Using SAP tools e.g. Transaction SMQ14 inbound queues. 
some to four outbound queues to identify errors or backlogs. B. RFC connection test. Perform an RFC connection test between source and target systems. Using transaction SM59 to ensure connectivity and authentication. C. Data load monitoring BW. Monitor data load processes in the target system e.g. BW. Using transaction or SMO monitor for data load to identify any failures or inconsistencies. D. IDOC analysis. Analyze IDOC's intermediate documents using transactions WEO to IDOC list and WEO5 IDOC display to identify errors or processing delays. E. Source data extraction. Verify data extraction processes in the source system e.g. ECC to ensure data consistency and completeness before replication. F. Data transformation and mapping. Review data transformation and mapping rules, e.g. in SAP BW transformations to ensure accurate conversion of data between systems. G. Error handling. Implement a handling mechanisms, e.g. error queues. Monitoring alerts to capture and resolve data replication errors promptly. These questions provide further insights into SAP BASIS troubleshooting scenarios that are commonly discussed in interviews. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data, science, SAP, AWS, DevOps and full-stack web development and more that will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers, for two to three years experienced candidates and four, five or above years experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most. Asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.